Hey, Brightworks here. What are we doing? 1986 930 Turbo. That we are going to put these fancy Molly Motorsport pistons and cylinders into. So we're going to get those all out, get them weighed up, make sure everything's right. And uh, we'll tag you along here as we go. All right, we're on with it. All right, so we've done a little unboxing. You know, Molly doesn't screw around. They, uh, they do a very good job of making sure that this stuff ships well. They've also picked up their game on their, uh, their instructions. So if you happen to order a kit, make sure you read those. Um, so we got a couple things we have to do before we can put this stuff on the engine. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to weigh each one of these pistons. Uh, because we know what rods we put where. So these pistons should be within about a gram of each other. So I'm not expecting too much drama there, but we're still going to do it. And then per the instructions, we've got to clean them and clean them well. And then we'll also measure the pins to make sure that all the pins are the same. Once we do that, then we will, each cylinder will get numbered. And then that number cylinder will get ring gapped. Uh, or the rings anyway will get placed in the cylinder, make sure that all the gaps are proper. And uh, once we do that, we'll put that particular set of rings on a particular piston, and then we'll be ready to install the piston onto the rods. And once we get six pistons on the rods, uh, then we will fight with uh, the uh, uh, ring uh, compressor. So that's the plan, we'll take you along. I know some of you guys want to see how to do this. YouTube is not a learn how to do this. You got to practice this stuff, but hopefully for uh, informational purposes, uh, we follow along and see what we do here. And these are 3.4 millimeter, uh, 3.4 liter pistons and cylinder kit. And these are 7.7 .7 to one. So nothing gigantic, you know, we're not trying to go eight and a half, nine to one. But 7.7 .7 will be a nice pickup from uh, from what the original, you know, kind of soft throttle uh, response, 7 to 7.1 to 1. So we think there'll be a big pickup. So we're going to get on with it. So a couple of subscribers have wanted more, like, in-depth. So when you weigh a piston, you got to have a scale, right? And we'll do it six times. So... Once we turn it on, sometimes I'll just tear it out with the uh, piston on there, but you guys know how to do this stuff. So we'll take our first piston, set her on there, and she's at 431.3. So 431.3. So we will take our marker and we will write 431.3 on the dome of the piston. Now, here's an interesting factoid for those of you that watched long enough. So I called Molly because when you look at the piston, there's an arrow on it, and their new instructions, which really never saw them before uh, in the previous packages, say that the arrow always has to go towards the flywheel. So I just called tech support, and a very nice guy answered the phone, and uh, I said, hey, if we do that, if the arrow points towards the flywheel, on one side of the engine, the piston's gonna be upside down. So what I was basically asking him is, were the valve pockets symmetrical? So he pulled up the part number, he looked at it for me, and what he told me is, absolutely, the valve pockets are symmetrical, but there is a 0.5 millimeter pin offset, right? So the pin is offset, and he said they do that to keep the uh, uh, thrust side loaded. So in fact, the offset on four through six is gonna be the opposite of the offset on one through three. So yes, we are going to have pistons that will be, quote, upside down from the others. Um, I thought that was kind of neat because uh, we've always followed the rules on, hey, that, that points towards the flywheel. But a lot of times on Porsches, air cooled especially, your valve pocket for your intake valve is enormous compared to your valve pocket uh, for your exhaust valve. So kind of silly, everybody knows the intake valves at the top so you match up your valve reliefs. Now these guys, I tried you know, measuring them with a micrometer and I was like, eh, I'm not, not sure, let me call the actual manufacturer. So he actually pulled up the drawings and he explained to me the rationale behind it. 
So interesting information. My guess is on these pistons, we're gonna be within a half gram. Uh, the tolerance here is a half a gram anyway. Um, and then on the rods, we've got the rods down to one gram. Porsche tolerance is somewhere between nine and 11 grams difference between rods. Um, so we're within one gram on the rods. So we'll be within one gram on these pistons too. So as far as like, where do they go? One, two, three, four, five, six, the mapping is once you, when you have these kind of parts, the mapping's not that important. But I think you guys have seen my other videos where you play Tetris with the heavy pin, the light rod and the light piston to kind of make weight work out. But we'll see what they are. We've got one done. We're gonna do that five more times. All right, so let's see, where did we leave off? We left off on weighing up all of our pistons. They were all within a half a gram of each other. But what we've got to do now is we've got to check our ring gap. So uh, Molly sends you packet, ring one, ring two, ring three. And when you do the math, uh, on a turbocharged engine, the Molly recommendation is actually a little bit bigger of a ring gap than uh, what the Porsche specification is. So we're kind of right in the middle of those two, which is perfectly okay. Uh, I think the old saying goes, if you run them loose, only you will know. If you run them tight, everyone will know when the engine blows up. So on turbocharged engines, it is absolutely a bigger ring gap than on the um, uh, on the uh, normally aspirated stuff. So in this case, Molly gives us a recommendation. We balance that with what Porsche says, and we kind of figure out where is it from there. So one other thing, when you're looking at your rings, uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to, to zoom in too well on this, but right here, there's a little laser etching and it's just the, the Molly M. But what that means is that's the top of the ring. So when you install it on the piston, you're looking for the mark. Uh, so I think um, uh, when JE sends them, they just have a dot and Molly usually puts a little M on there. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna check for ring gap. So how do we do that? Well, first thing we do is we put the ring in the cylinder, all right? Now I'm gonna use a piston because these guys have a nice flat edge. So we want to be down, um, Molly says, what, 2.54 centimeters or 254 millimeters, which we know is an inch. So roughly an inch, we want to get this piston down to about there. And what that does is it makes sure that our ring is square in the bore. So we've now got to measure that ring gap. We do that with a feeler gauge. So I know that I want these to be a minimum of 40, probably a maximum of 50. Uh, it depends. Again, that's something that uh, a lot of people will sit down and calculate, figure out uh, what's the right number for the application. So let's see if we are, nope, we're a little bit tighter than that. So we're going to go down to the half millimeter and that ought to put us right in the middle of our sweet spot. So we're just coming in. If you guys that have never done this type of thing before, we're just gonna see if we can drag our feeler gauge. Yeah, see our feeler gauge goes through there without any problem. So we're within a half of a uh, uh, tenth of a millimeter. So we're very happy with, with that ring gap. So pull that one out. And then what I do is I actually have a log where I capture what were all the clearances before uh, uh, we finally set everything. So if you're an Excel spreadsheet lover, that's what I use. But basically it's just so that I can go back and look for future builds and say, hey, how well did this one work? And what we're doing is our number two right now. So we're gonna do the same thing, basically about halfway down the pin bore. And gonna grab our feeler gauge one more time. Everything is squared up inside of there. So we're gonna see if we can run this feeler gauge through there. And that one fits perfect. All right. So we know our second ring is good. And first, second, and third rings. First and second on the turbos, pretty much you want the same uh, ring gap, or at least the same tolerance ring gap. 
and then the third one can be a little bit looser. So with these, the trick that you've got to do is you've got to take out the little expander on the inside, right? So we'll take this guy out. We'll install him on the piston uh, later, but we're just going to set him aside for right this second. And I just always have a habit of looking for where's the up. So right there, there's a little mark. And we'll put this guy in. Set him down so he's square. And you can also do that using like a, a feeler gate, or a, I'm sorry, a micrometer, right? You set it out to, uh, let's say in this case, it would be about 25.4 millimeters. And then you would lock it down and then you can go around and kind of get your ring down in there. But in this case, we got nice flat top pistons, makes that job a lot easier. All right, so this one I expect to be just a touch tighter. So our ring is square. And yep, as expected, that guy does not fit through. So we'll go and we'll find a full size down on this one. And we'll double check, run a feeler gauge through there and fits perfect. But we've got that half size. So just to make sure we're happy where it is, but we want to know accurately what was it when we put it in. So we're going to go in this case for the five and that does not go in there smoothly. So we know what our ring gaps are now for all three uh, rings and that is measuring ring gap. So now that I know that these three rings are good for this particular cylinder, uh, this in, in this case, this is gonna be our number four cylinder. So we'll pull our number four piston. And what we're gonna go off and do now is clean everything really well. Um, comes with coatings, you know, Molly, this, this gray stuff, I forget what they call it, but graphyl or something. Maybe that's what the skirts are called. But <clears throat> we're gonna get everything nice and clean hot soapy water and on this one we'll use like a uh, a green scrubby but they have already sent these pistons with a very nice cross hatch we just need to be able to get the stuff the dirt out of it because if we take a kim wipe right now without cleaning it at all it's probably going to come out pretty nasty so just a kim wipe and some rubbing alcohol and you can see on the kim wipe all that junk so instead of rubbing this thing down with alcohol about 20 times, we're going to go clean it, dry it, and then come back and use the, uh, the Kim wipes one more time because you do keep going through it until all of this, you know, that's compound grit, right, for when they, um, uh, when they hone the cylinders. We don't want that in there. We do want the rings to be the only thing, and they will seat in there. So we're going to get everything nice and clean. So we're going to clean the cylinder. We're going to clean the piston and we're gonna clean up one of these pins. So that'll have us, for our parts, we'll be ready to uh, uh, put stuff together. All right, so let's see, I got some cleaning to do. I'm gonna get on with it, see you back here. All right, we got everything cleaned up. So this is the portion of the show where you use a lot of Kim wipes. So take our Kim wipe, fold it over, and what I've got in that little bottle back there is just rubbing alcohol. So we're gonna go through here, see just how clean it is. Typically, after you've cleaned them very, very well, you still gotta go through twice with these chem wipes. See, there's just a touch of, of uh, gray stuff on there. And that's after using a scrubby. So you wanna get all that crap out of the cylinder. So we're gonna get one more chem wipe. And based on how the other ones went, this one should come out clean. So this time, just gonna, same thing, isopropyl alcohol, and we'll clean this, lint-free cloths. So yeah, you probably go through a roll of paper towels, we're good there, flip her over, and we're good there. So now, when we get to this point, one of the things that we do is we're going to install the base gasket. 
But with the base gasket, and we're using a standard base gasket, we didn't have the, the uh, case cut, so standard base gasket. One of the things that I like to do is use a little product that you all have heard me talk about a lot called Curel T. So I'm just gonna go around the base of the cylinder, make sure I don't have any gaps. And this stuff will squeeze out, so you'll end up having to clean this up. But you wanna get the bottom. Now, some, some people don't do this, and that's quite all right. Everybody's got kind of their own way of doing stuff. Uh, the way I look at it, I started doing it on mag cases because mag cases, uh, a lot of porosity. And then I started to think to myself, well, wait a minute, the stuff that we're working on, even though it's aluminum, it's still 40 years old. So any little things on the spigot face could, oh, oops, could cause us to have, you know, a minor leak. So instead of having a minor leak, we use a little Carol T. It helps by making sure that everything is, is in there properly, and we'll go from there. So we're, all I'm doing right now, I'm letting the alcohol evaporate off. Now you've got a couple of cutouts, you've got a couple of reliefs in the, uh, in the uh, base gasket. And you know what we know is that the long side, where the reliefs are, go on the sides of the piston, and then the four indentations go on the top and the bottom. So we'll set this guy on there and push him down a little bit. And we can see we got good uh, squeeze out of our of our gasket material here, or well, our Cure-All T, let's just call it that. And most of that stuff is gonna get squeezed out. There's different versions of base gaskets. Uh, you can get them with a black Teflon coating. Um, and or you can get them all in copper this is what Wrightwood does so we know it's decent stuff all right we've got our gaps aligned so we're not gonna have to worry about that on the way in and now we set our cylinder down and I usually like to place it fins down so that way I know kind of which side you know this is gonna go down so what's up on the piston all right now that that's done we just set that guy aside he's gonna sit there for a little while and we're gonna move over to our piston. So, let's see if we can get you guys a decent view here. So this is our number four piston. We got his weight. This is the pin that's gonna go with him. First thing we gotta do though, is before we even put the rings on, what we're gonna do is we're gonna install this um, retainer clip for the, for the pin on the side of the piston that we're not going to be working on. So in this case, the little arrow goes towards the flywheel. This is number four, so we know he's sitting this way. So we're gonna slide our pin in as we assemble it from this side. So this guy can go in here first. Now the chances of me doing this on camera are about one in five million, but there's uh, injectors. I think Stomsky makes an injector. And I've never used it, but there are times when some of these pins get very, very, very tight. But basically you're just working it in. This is kind of dealer's choice on how do you do that. Wear eyeglasses, eye protection, whatever you want to call it, because we're close but there's a good chance this thing will fly across the room. Got one little edge here. That we're gonna work in slowly but surely. And you get a little scratch on the piston. It actually says in the uh, instructions, this is how you do it. And it says, if you scratch the coating, don't worry about it. So a little scratch, not a big deal. We're not gouging this thing, right? I'm actually being really, really gentle here. So we got her in, we heard the click. You're always listening for the click. And then you wanna run your finger around it 
make sure that it's actually in the slot, that it's not kind of half in, half out. So in this case, we're all in, so we're good. All right, from there, we got to install our rings. We always start with our oil expander ring, little springy looking thing. And the joint for the springy looking thing goes at the bottom on the oil expander ring. Because what we're going to do is we're going to put it opposite of where the expander ring uh, is split. So we got that guy. He's sitting in there. Now, I always like to turn the piston over. I do this by hand. Some guys have a tool. You can get the tool. Totally up to you. Not a, not a huge deal. But it will be a little bit easier on your fingers if you get the ring expander tool. But I've done enough of these that... I think I have calluses now. All right, so there's our top mark, all right? So we wanna be at the top of the piston and we can always reorient it, but we know that our expander is at the bottom. So for right now, we're gonna grab this guy and we're not gonna spiral him on. Uh, all the ring manufacturers hate when guys do that. They want you to spread the ring and put it on. That's why they sell the piston expander. So if your fingers aren't able to do it, you can get the expander that will do it. But that whole spiraling on of piston rings, that's been decades long discussions. Should you do it? Should you not do it? And the ring manufacturers say don't do it. All right, so we've now, whoops, we gotta get that guy in there. Now we've captured that. So we move around a little bit, make sure it's in there correctly. Take a look, make sure our expander's in there. Boom, now we turn the piston back around because we're gonna go for a, uh, not three and nine, probably more like a four and eight position. And so we're gonna grab our number two ring, just give it a little wipe with Kim wipe, get anything off there that's not supposed to be on there. And we got our little mark, it says M top. So once again, these particular pistons, they have this extra relief so you got to be careful that you don't get the ring stuck in there and break the ring. Um, so you've got basically top ring, middle ring, bottom ring. But in the middle here is a little relief that does like to uh, try to catch on the ring. So we got this guy. Spread him out. Get him over the bottom. And he goes in just like that. So we've got him oriented at uh, four o'clock, and none of, that none of that matters just yet, but it's good practice. And our last one, our top ring, in this case, we're in, we're in good shape because the middle ring is black, the top ring is silver, but um, if you get like a set of JE pistons, you gotta be careful. Some of them will have a bevel, so you gotta make sure you read the instructions on where the bevels go and all that kind of stuff. All right, so there's our top mark. We'll grab this guy. We'll spread him. And he's in. All right, so now we've got our um, retaining clip in. We've got our rings on. So we've got to oil this guy up. But I don't want to get too messy oiling him up because what I'll do is I'll foul my uh, um, LT. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab another brand new clean Kim wipe, hold it down a little bit, and then I love my old fashioned oil can, right? Old old school. Uh, this has uh, non-synthetic, uh, I think it's a 40 weight oil that's in there. And we just wanna put a little bit, right? We're not putting a lot because the goal here isn't to, uh, get everything greasy. It's just to put a nice coating of oil here so that when we're spinning the engine over, when we're setting our cams and all that type of stuff, we've got you know a little bit of a oil on the surface so we're not scratching the hell out of the rings. And I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but basically you can tell where you've put oil here and where you haven't uh, just by the, the color or the sheen. All right, so that's good. So we're gonna set this guy down and we're gonna grab our piston 
Now, <clears throat> Molly very specifically says do not dip these. A lot of guys used to kind of just leave these sitting overnight in an oil bath. And that was the way to do it way back when. Molly says absolutely do not do that. That will over oil everything and your rings will never ever break in. So we're just gonna put a little bit of oil in there and then we're gonna work it around. So just kind of spinning these rings around making sure that we've got some oil in there, not a ton. People say, why do they smoke on startup after a rebuild? Well, because you're burning all this shit out of there. All right, so I'm very happy with how that whole deal looks. And uh, now final orientation, right? So we know that this is the top of the piston. So let's grab our oil ring first okay we got him set and then number two's in good shape but now we move number one over here oh look at that i had the arrows upside down so reorient now does this matter that's up for great debate i've taken a lot of engines apart and i try to look at where are the rings was that top oil ring pointing up no these things move guys these things absolutely will move around. However, that does not mean we don't at least try. Okay, so we got our, our rings oriented correctly. And for the big pistons that we're using here, I like to use this tool. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load the piston into the cylinder. So this tool is made by Wiseco and it's 98 and a half millimeter tapered bore. So it basically squeezes the rings down as it goes in. You cannot, I repeat, you cannot install it from the top. The top of the piston, or the, I'm sorry, the top of the cylinder is 98 millimeters. The bottom is a little bit tapered. So it lets us get this in there. So we've got to get our piston down in here. And sometimes you got to do a little bit of snuggling. Okay, that one went in relatively easy, cool. And I'm just pushing it in where the top of the piston protrudes just a little bit, right? I don't want to pop that top ring out, but what I want that protrusion to do is allow me to be centered. So when I drop it on there, it's centered. And we're gonna hold the black tool down, but kind of get it in there. She actually went a little deeper than I needed her. So I gotta pull it up a little bit. And the reason for that is we are trying to get this guy set so that we can get the wrist pin in. And we don't wanna come too far off because the oil ring will pop out. But if we don't come far enough out, we won't be able to get our gudgeon pin in there or our wrist pin, British terms. All right, so we should be good there. Now we're gonna use a little bit of assembly lube. <clears throat> this is also the operation where you're gonna wash your hands about 150 times. We got a little bit of assembly lube, you know, nice clean hands. So work that around in there a little bit on the one side. And we'll do the same to the other side. Again, you don't want to use too much, but you also don't want to use too little. So then what I do is I take the excess and I actually grease up the wrist pin. So don't want to, if you put too much in, you'll know it because the pin won't slide all the way to the end and then you can't get your retaining clip in. So get this guy to go in here. Brand new parts, there we go, okay. So that's in. This guy is now ready to move over to the engine and we're gonna load him onto the number four cylinder. To do that, I gotta reorient you. So be right back. So we're gonna try this camera view. Now, one of the things I did not mention is uh, this guy, the uh, wrist pin bushing in the piston or in the connecting rod. You gotta clean it and also grease that, all right, with a little bit of assembly lube. So now we've got assembly lube on everything. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna just get our cylinder 
on the top like that of the uh, head studs and then we'll push this guy in just far enough where we can get him to go into that rod. Oops, going a little hard to get. So this is why there's a choice. Do you put the pistons on first? Do you put the pistons and then the cylinders later? On the smaller bore stuff, I do it where I put the piston on first and then I put the cylinder in afterwards. All right, we've got our wrist pin all the way in there. And now what we have to do <clears throat> is we've got to get our little uh, retaining ring on there. So to do that, let's see, I'm gonna move you guys over. Actually, I'm not gonna try and do that with the camera on, but I will show you once it's done. Well, that actually went a lot easier than uh, a couple of the others have. So now that we've got that guy on there, we've gotta use just a little hand pressure, right? Because we've got our rings tensioning the uh, piston. All right. And we get this guy right there in the spigot. Bam. Now, usually the green stuff, the Cure LT, will get on the threads. And when you go to take your uh, little cylinder holders off, you're like, ah, oh, what the hell? Why is that so tight? Because the Cure LT is holding it on. All right, and you can see it kind of squeeze out of the top there. And. We've got good squeeze on the top, good squeeze on the bottom. Things tightened down. Look at that, we're good. Take a cleanish paper towel, just wipe off all the excess oil. And then we rotate the engine over because we're gonna work on the next one and we wanna get that rod out as far as possible. So we look in there, now that rod is out as far as it's gonna be. And we're gonna do that whole process two more times. And then one of the things that I do is I take a clean Kim wipe because remember, we just oiled everything up a lot, right? We don't need all that excess oil. So I'm gonna wipe out a little bit of the excess oil from the cylinder and we're gonna call that good. All right, well, I am gonna get on, oops, we gotta square up. So one of the things, there's a little bit of slop left to right, right? So you kinda of wanna make sure you have that centered. Does it matter? It matters when you go to put the tins in because you won't have clearance between the cylinders. As far as, you know, round hole with a round head sitting on top of it, not a tremendous deal, uh, but you won't be able to get your tins in. So you wanna make sure that this guy is actually as, as level as possible. And you'll end up resetting that probably a couple times. All right, we're gonna get on with it and get the other two done. And uh, we'll call this a, a day. So give us a minute and we'll be back. All right, so we've got our short block built out. We've got all six pistons and cylinders in there. And the last step for the short block is to put in the uh, air baffles. We sometimes call them tins, but they're really baffles. So in this case, we've gone from a 3.3 uh, three turbo cylinder to more of a 3.2 style cylinder even though they're still turbo pistons and cylinders from Molly, they change the design. So what that means is the baffles have to change. So this is an original turbo baffle, and you can see these steps, right? And those steps won't fit on the new pistons and cylinders or on the new cylinder kit. So you have to get baffles that don't have the steps. Pretty standard uh, upgrade, but sometimes they don't tell you that type of stuff when you say, hey, I wanna go with the three, four kit, Absolutely, 3-4 kit's a great idea. You just can't use the original baffles. So um, Porsche used to sell these. Now there's a kit that you can buy. So not, uh, not going to break the bank. And when you're building a motor like this, you really don't want to skimp and say, oh, you know, what do I do? I'll grind some of this stuff off. Keeping these engines cool. Horsepower's heat. So this is a cheap uh, insurance, if you will, to make sure that we keep the heat down as much as possible. All right, enough of me rambling. I'm gonna get you guys set up and we're gonna put these in the engine. 
All right, so let's get these tins installed. So first things first, what's the orientation, right? So the, uh, the cutout here is towards the front. So this guy is gonna slide in just like that. And if you try and put him in the other way, will he fit? Yeah, but you get this big gap back here that you're not looking for. So on the left side, we know that this half guy with just the normal cutout fits in there. And if you don't do this before you install your um, uh, before you install your cylinder head, you're going to be taking everything back apart because they don't fit that way. Ooh, so close yet so far. Come on, there we go. All right, first two in. That's a good start. Then we go to our second. This guy and this guy. Now, how do you know which one goes back here? See this little extra cutout here? That little cutout is because of the way the case is shaped. So if you don't have the cutout, this guy won't fit in there. So if you try to use the wrong one, right? This guy doesn't have the cutout. Then it just kind of stops and sticks out. So it won't fit correctly. I've seen guys cut these things to make them fit correctly when it's not really the correct way of making them fit. So, put this guy in, put this guy in, and then really your hardest part here is these silly springs. Sometimes you gotta use a screwdriver. Sometimes they will just go, okay. Now, this one actually sits a little bit forward. And why is that important? Uh, because on the newer motors, and when I say newer, I'm talking about uh, 86 and, and up. They use three. So it used to be, Porsche only used two. If you pull a mag case apart, you'll only see two. You pull an SC apart, um, you got a 50-50 chance of seeing two. Any of the three, two, all the way up, they put in all three. So I don't know if it was because things were rattling or what, but we're gonna put all three in. We're gonna cheat a little bit by setting that guy over. Oops. Yeah, you guys don't need to see my watch. This is why I brought a screwdriver. Okay. And there you have it. So we'll put the other four pieces, one, two, three, four, on the other side. But as of right now, you've got all of your guides in, air guides in. So it will funnel that air down through the top, push it out through the sides. And uh, that's why these cutouts exist, so you get more air flowing across the cylinder fins. All right, let me get that finished up. And thanks for following along as we built out this short block. So it's got 3.4 liter pistons in it, pistons and cylinders, so 98 millimeters, 7.7 .7 to one on the compression ratio. And let's see, what else? Oh, we got our, our uh, chain uh, rails in. So those went in, got our air guides in, and now we are ready. Actually, we're ready, but we're waiting on cylinder heads. So once the cylinder heads arrive, then we will uh, get on with it, build out the long block, and uh, hopefully take you along for the ride on that too. So thanks for watching. Have a fantastic day, even though it's not there. Check us out at brightworks.com. Hit that subscribe button if you like these kind of videos.